The mechanisms of pathogen recognition of innate and adaptive immunity have significant differences. In contrast, the response is that cells of innate and adaptive immunity and act to eliminate pathogens are strongly intertwined and actually influence and support each other. However, there are different types of pathogens in nature which different mechanisms of aggression and different expansion dynamics. Some pathogens or viruses and some bacteria are intercellular. In other words, they penetrate the cell completely and damage it. Other pathogens instead are extracellular and can damage cells through the production of toxins and so on. Consequently, the responses enacted by the immune system are different depending on the type of insult received. The set of innate and adaptive cellular and humoral mechanisms that work together to achieve elimination of a certain type of pathogen is called the effector module or response type. When integrated, these modules may involve innate and adaptive elements that share specific recognition and response characteristics. This suggests that adaptive elements are nothing more than evolutions of existing innate elements that have been refined and refined over the course of evolution. In essence, for example, the response against a virus will involve a different effector module from that generated in response to a parasite, which in turn will be different from that generated against the extracellular bacterium. In this way, our organism is able, even with the same actors, to optimize the response against the type of pathogen it encounters. In general, there are four effector modules. Cytotoxicity, which leads to the elimination of cells infected with viruses or those under cellular stress. Type 1 or intracellular immunity which promotes the removal of intracellular pathogens. Type 2 or mucosal and barrier immunity which leads to the removal of parasites. Type 3 or immunity against extracellular bacteria and fungi. These effector modules span innate and adaptive elements in other words, it has been found, for example, that subtypes of innate lymphocells, ILCs, are similar to their dynamics to the helper T-cell subtypes of adaptive immunity. Similarly, the cytotoxicity mechanism of innate NK cells closely resembles that of adaptive cytotoxic T-cells. Along with different cellular responses, specific cytokines and chemokines may also participate in different response modules. For example, interferon gamma, a typical cytokine of effective module or response type 1, or better, the one that promotes immunity against intracellular pathogens, for example, microbacterium tuberculosis. It is produced by T helper 1 cells and ILC ones precisely. In addition, other sensors of innate immunity can promote a type 2 response, which promotes mucosal and barrier immunity, which is very useful for the removal of parasites by recruiting cells such as basophils, eosinophils and mast cells, or sensors that can promote a type 3 response, that is, towards extracellular bacteria and fungi, with neutrophils being one of the main players. Immunity provided by antibodies produced by B cells and thus an arm of adapted immunity is often called humoral from humor equal liquid as antibodies are free in the body's fluids. This is a misnomer however because other systems such as complement also participate in the humoral response. Although there are no adaptive mechanisms while the specificity of the antibodies of the given antigen depends on the variable region. The type of effector mechanism depends on the constant region, FC region. There are in fact five different types of FC regions that determine the antibody class of isotype.
Different FC regions interact with different cell types, elicit different immune responses. But how do antibodies protect us from infection? Well, in at least three ways. 1. Neutralization Antibodies are able to bind products of pathogens, for example bacterial toxins or the pathogens themselves and prevent their contact with the body's cells and thus their potential entry. In this way the pathogen or its product is neutralized. Antibody opsonization. Antibodies can decorate the surface of the pathogens along with other components of innate immunity and promote their uptake by phagocytes and subsequent elimination. This process of preparation for phagocyte recognition is precisely called opsonization. 2. Complement activation. Complement system is the collection of soluble proteins that when activated complement the activities of antibodies allowing immune cells to function better. For example, components of complement may participate in opsonization along with antibodies enhancing recognition by phagocytes which possess specific receptors for complement factors or they may act as a booster for other immune elements at the site of infection. The complement system can also activate on its own, but its activation is much more effective with antibodies. Finally, other complement factors can facilitate phagocyte killing. Unlike B cells, T cells intervene firsthand in immune responses, either by directly inducing the death of the altered cells or by producing cytokines that support other immune elements in their function. T cells can be divided into two major families, CD4 plus and CD8 plus. CD4 and CD8 are two surface proteins involved in the interaction between T cells and other cells, in addition to their function performed by the TCR. They are therefore also called co-receptors. CD4 plus T lymphocytes recognize class 2 MHC modules, while CD8 plus T lymphocytes recognize class 1 MHC modules. Class 1 MHCs are expressed by almost all cells in the body. Normally they express self-antigens which are not able to trigger an immune response. However, a virus-infected cell or cancer cell may start expressing different antigens on class 1 MHCs and CD8 plus T lymphocytes can recognize and activate them. CD8 plus effector T lymphocytes are cytotoxic towards the cell expressing the altered antigen and directly lead to the death of the cell. This can be by releasing perforins granzymes, lictic enzymes, activating apoptosis program. On the other hand, class 2 MHCs are expressed by phagocytes and antigen-presenting cells, APCs, and B lymphocytes. These immune cells can phagocytize pathogens on their components, degrade them and expose the resulting antigens on class 2 MHCs. When CD4 plus T lymphocytes specific for the particular antigen recognize it and are activated, they function as helper in the activation of other immune cells and produce a series of specific mediators depending on the type of pathogen that has to be removed. This is why CD4 plus T lymphocytes are also called helper TH lymphocytes. There are different types of TH based on the effector modules we saw before. Let's take a closer look at them through some practical examples. Suppose a patient has contracted tuberculosis, a bacterial disease called by microbacterium tuberculosis, an intracellular bacterium. This patient's pulmonary macrophages actively phagocytize the bacteria but fail to destroy them on their own. As the microbacteria 
elude macrophage killing by preventing the fusion of lysosomes with the endosomes containing them. However, macrophages expose load components of the microbacterium on their own class II MHCs and expose them on their membrane. A Th specific for that given antigen can recognize them and in the appropriate tumor microenvironment create a type 1 response, polarizing as Th1. This lymphocyte begins to produce several mediators, including IFNY, which is able to promote macrophage killing mechanisms and lead to the removal of the microbacterium. By similar mechanisms, depending on the immune microenvironment, and the type of pathogen, Th2 or Th17 may develop. By these mechanisms, Ths are active B cells, promoting their differentiation into plasma cells and their antibody production. At various points of the various immune arms, there may be defects that can lead to the malfunction or non-functioning of some defensive mechanisms. This leads to a partial or total absence of the effect and mechanisms we have seen so far. There are the most severe cases where the adaptive response is completely absent and the death of the individual occurs during childhood. In other cases, if only the few cell types are missing, the person may survive, but go through recurrent infections by certain pathogens, depending on the type of cell that is missing. These immune defects can result from inherited genetic diseases or can be acquired during an individual's lifetime. The most prevalent and famous acquired immune defect is the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, caused by two viruses, HIV-1 and HIV-2, which can infect CD4 expressing cells, thus T cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages. In other diseases, the immune system does not play a defensive role but works in an altered way. In allergies, for example, a normally harmless antigen is seen as an alien and leads to the massive and intermediate release of inflammatory substances that can even kill the individual. In autoimmune diseases, on the other hand, the immune system identifies and destroys tissues in the body. An example is type 1 diabetes, where the beta cells of the pancreas are destroyed by the immune system, resulting in the absence of insulin in the individual. Hence, immune responses can be either harmful or beneficial depending on where they develop. In conclusion, it should be noticed that over the decades, the increasingly precise characterization of immune mechanisms has led to the development of useful strategies to manipulate the immune system for therapeutic purposes. Think of vaccines, the most important preventive medical tool we have. They are based on the material inoculation of a particular pathogen with the aim of developing a protective immunological memory against a real infection. Thanks to vaccines, diphtheria, polio and measles, three infectious diseases that in specific conditions may also lead to death, have been virtually eradicated in the United States. Not to mention the great epidemiological and economic beneficial effects that the ongoing worldwide vaccination campaign against SARS-CoV-2 is showing. Still, the identification of certain well-defined intervening molecules of immune responses has led to the development of monoclonal antibodies that interact with these targets and have several effects. This is a new precision medicine which is based on specific target cells. For example, the discovery of the vascular endothelial growth factor pathway and its implications on different neoplasms has led to the development of anti-VEGF antibodies that can hinder cancer growth precisely by blocking this intracellular cascade. Finally, 
the discovery of the close relationship between the immune system and cancer development has resulted in the rise to a fr new frontier of biomedical research, cancer immunotherapy. Understanding the mechanisms through which cancer cells elude the immune control has led, for example, to the invention of anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibodies which can mobilize T cells against cancer. The effect uh, mechanisms of immunity are ultimately diverse and complex, but they all contribute in the eradication of a harmful agent, be it a virus, bacterium or cancer cell. If we understand them under normal and pathological conditions, we can also get the use of specific therapies and predict the development of new strategies currently not in use. Thank you for watching. This video was created by School of Biomedical Sciences Agora. We hope you enjoyed it. If you're curious or have any doubt or question, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you want to find out more about us or want to support our project, click on the following link to visit our website.